This is a talented Cardinal team. Just have been dysfunctional on both sides of the ball. Blanton Creaky will kick it away to Maurice Trowell to get our game underway on Raycom Sports, celebrating 35 years of broadcasting ACC football. Just beyond the 20, maybe to the 22 for Trowell, 19 yards on the return. Time for our food line impact players. Let's start with the pack. Well, North Carolina State would like to run the football. Reggie Gillespie would be a part of that. He's got nine rushing touchdowns, but they would like to crank up the run game some today. It's been a little bit lacking from time to time. And on the defensive side of the football, Louisville's talented, but maybe nobody more talented than D. Smith. Their safety leads them in tackles. He'll be all over the field. The senior from Florence. Alabama Ryan Finley the graduate student from Phoenix Arizona and a transfer from Boise State first and ten from the 22 for the NC State Wolfpack Finley has the time from a sturdy pocket incomplete down the sideline at the 45 yard line Kelvin Harmon couldn't hang on Boy, the ball right on the money from Finley again Harmon running the wheel route down the sideline Let's take a look see wheels it down the sideline pretty tight coverage but the ball right on the money hit him right in the hands and Dave what did the coaches say to us in our meetings yesterday the drops were an issue especially last Thursday in the loss to Wake Forest uh, got him isolated on a linebacker OKK trying to run with the talented wide receiver Kelvin Harmon NC State six and three on the year three and three in conference play they swing it off to the left and wrestled out of bounds is a Mecca Imezi only two yards as Trey Sean Smith escorted him to the sideline yeah, good job by Louisville to rally to the football CJ Avery involved in that play as well and here's where they would like to force North Carolina State into third long great opportunity to gain some some momentum here for Louisville right off the start NC State on the season 48 percent on third down that is the best in the ACC this is third and eight from the 24 for Ryan Finley and the pack. Four receivers to choose from. Finley goes over the middle. That is short of the first down marker to the 29. They got five yards, but it's fourth down for NC State. Yeah, Dorian Etheridge makes the play in the middle. They dropped eight into coverage. Made Ryan Finley lay the ball off underneath, and then when you do that, you have to tackle. And what a great start for Louisville defensively. They have had a tough time getting anybody stopped. 117th in the country in total defense. Outstanding opening series for the Louisville Cardinal on defense. Rajay Burns, who leads the conference in punt return average, just over 16 yards per return, ranging to his right. And he makes a successful fair catch near the 30. And there was contact. The punt was 41 yards. Yeah, how's there not a flag? You can't hit the guy returning the returning the kick. Devon Graves making contact for NC State. That's got to be a penalty, Tom. Steering the kick. Personal foul. Hands in the face, number 14 on the kicking team. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. Well, there should be another penalty at the end of this, too. You can't hit the guy once he signals for a fair catch. Unless they're saying he was blocked into him. I didn't see that. I mean, you're not allowed to touch that guy. So, a little surprise there. But they do get the benefit of an illegal hands to the face. So, great field position for Louisville offensively. And Lorenzo Ward's team has a chance to really make a statement here opening the game. Coach Ward spent four years as a defensive coordinator under Steve Spurrier at South Carolina. Coach won Jadeveon Clowney in his time in Columbia, South Carolina. Now the interim head coach this week. And Lake Cunningham, an outstanding runner at quarterback now. This is Cunningham. He is their leading rusher this season, Dave. Came into the game with 308 yards in total rushing as White made the tackle after a short game. Well, Cunningham is completing 60% of his passes, but he's only thrown, only thrown 45 passes. But it's his ability to run the football is really uh, where he's dangerous. And it makes it doubly tough for NC State now because they didn't know who was going to play quarterback. Cunningham, the redshirt freshman from Montgomery, Alabama. On second down from the pocket. The pass is complete. NC State side of the 50. Des Fitzpatrick diving for the first down. And he might have got it there at the 45. And he did. 
All right, time for our food line impact players, the Louisville offense. Yeah, and the guy that just made the catch, Des Fitzpatrick, has three touchdowns on the year and leads the team, but he had a huge day against NC State a year ago. Ten catches, 134 yards on the defensive side of the ball. Maybe the best football player on the field. Jermaine Pratt leads the team in tackles. He's second in the ACC, had 12 tackles last week and a loss to Wake Forest, but he's a next-level player at linebacker. On first down, they'll go up the middle. Wilson on the run for four yards. Well, Jermaine Pratt started out as a safety, now is a six foot three, 240 pound linebacker that can run. Now he's a little bit of the nail instead of the hammer there, but he did a good job of making the tackle. Pratt will be everywhere, has great ability to cover as well as go sideline to sideline. Four yards on the previous play for Wilson. This is an aggressive NC State defense already bluffing some pressure right in here. NC State is second in the conference against the run. This one is going to go down inside the 30. It's Cunningham spins his way near the 26-yard line before Griffin tackled him. Well, we talked to Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator for NC State, to say, well, what do you do with the two different quarterbacks? Pass, the big, tall passer, Cunningham, the runner. He says, we'll have to have a game plan for both. And so Cunningham opens the game, and right now it's going to be about NC State finding a way to fill the gaps and fit properly against the run, or Cunningham will make you fool look foolish. 15 yards on that rush. Smith is the back to the right of Cunningham. First and 10 for the Cardinals. This is Smith. He's got a hole inside the 20 and down to the 15. It's another first down for the Cardinals and 11 yards right had the tackle. Yeah, just a good job of this big offensive line coming off and playing with some passion. I talked about pride for Louisville. And you can already see it. Excellent defensive stand to start the game. And the offense has come out fast. Only once this season has Louisville taken it down the field on their opening possession to score a touchdown. And that came in a loss against Wake Forest. Cunningham. Minimal gain. Ran into the arms of Isaiah Moore. Uh, he's the third leading tackler. The redshirt freshman. Does a great job of filling against Cunningham on the zone read. Drops the hammer. He's going to step into that hole. That's what you call fitting the run properly. Good read by Moore, the redshirt freshman, and a nice hit there to force second and long. Just a yard after the violent collision and a loss of one on that play. Quick pass to the end zone. Back corner, and it's too far for the receiver. That was Jalen Smith in the back corner of the end zone with number four, Nick McLeod, for NC State. That's a good read by Cunningham. NC State tries to heat him up with pressure. And he throws the fade just a little bit too long. Here's our red zone brought to you by CPI Security, official security partner of the ACC. 87% on the season in total, 21 touchdowns, and sixth in the conference for the Louisville Cardinals. And 70%'s not bad, Tom, and Malik Cunningham gives him an opportunity because he can run with the football. This is Cunningham. Dumps it off over the middle near the 15. The catch is made. That was Wilson who came out of the backfield, and Pratt made the tackle for NC State and two yards. Well, part of the versatility of Jermaine Pratt seen right there is he picks the backup out of the backfield and makes the play on that little angle route. So we've seen Pratt make the tackle against the run, and now a play in pass coverage and forces a field goal opportunity for Louisville. Creaky this season is eight of nine. This will be a 32-yard attempt. For his career, that long of 48 came in the game last year at NC State against the Pack. From 32 yards away, and Louisville is on the board. First three points resulting from their opening drive of the football game. A good positive note for the Cardinals to start this game on. This is Trowell. Trowell trying to get to the 25, and he doesn't get there. The return 16 yards from Trowell. Our Carolina Ford dealers keys to the game right now with Dave Archer. Uh, you want to be justified. You justify your existence, justify your season. If you're NC State, we, we do that because of the, the great big chestnut that won the triple crown back in 2000, this, this year in 2018. How about unbridled? Unbridled passion, effort by the, by the Cardinals. Unbridled, the 1990 Derby winner and Breeders' Cup Classic champion, the Big Bay. So just a Kentucky Derby influence on our keys today. And those twin spires of Churchill Downs just a short distance away from our location at Cardinal Stadium. Two yards on the run. It was Gillespie. 
Well, so far, Louisville's done what they need to do, limit the run game. It's something NC State has struggled a little bit with to get the run game going. They're going to try the left side. Not a whole lot there. Big red roadblock, just a yard for Reggie Gillespie Jr., the senior. Yeah, this is a run defense. It's 127th in the in the nation, giving up almost 283 yards a game. But so far, Louisville's done a nice job against the run game. Our first and ten line brought to you by Dish. Switch the Dish to get every major Division I college football game. It is now third down for NC State. Third and seven. And whistle stop play. There is a flag on the field. It's in the defensive backfield of Louisville. Defense, 12 men in formation. Five yard penalty. Third down. Now you can understand trying to get the right personnel on the field to match NC State when they go to this four wide set. But an opportunity now, the, the great opportunity now, NC State is pushing the the third and short instead of being third and long changes the, the play call for Eli Drinkwitz. Again, NC State best in the conference in third down situations. Shortened to third and two after the penalty against Louisville. Quick drop, quick throw. First down yardage to the 38 or 9. Kelvin Harmon made the catch. They got six yards, and Dave, we touched upon that combination at the top of the broadcast. Yeah, Harmon dropped the first opportunity. This time makes a catch to extend the drive, move the chains. Excellent throw and catch. Pack working quickly. Up near the 45-yard lines and out of bounds. Jacoby Myers on the other side. The junior has the catch. Anthony Johnson was defending for Louisville five yards. NC State likes to play with some tempo, spread you out, go fast. But the only way you can do that is to get first downs. The Harmon catch extended the drive, allowed him to get in some of their tempo. On the five-receiver set, just short of midfield, and it is complete. That's Thayer Thomas, the redshirt freshman from Wake Forest, North Carolina, and Heritage High School. This has been where they've been so good. Ryan Finley does such a great job of reading defense, finding those short, easy throws, getting the ball out of his hands. This time he'll hand it off. Gillespie. Short gain, but just over midfield into Louisville real estate. A yard for Gillespie. Of course, he does a good job of folding in from the defensive inside. Brian Van Gorder, the defensive coordinator, had a chance of visit with Ryan. And these, all these coaches for Louisville have had to kind of check their future at the door and try to help get their kids ready to play. They just want their kids to play at the highest level these last two weeks. Send these seniors, 11 seniors out with a good field. Finley lets it fly inside the 40 for a first down. Emeka Emezi, the sophomore, has the catch for 12 yards. Now this is a talented receiver core. Emezi, the youngster of the three, we'll see mainly. Harmon and Jacoby Myers, the other two, they'll sprinkle in a couple other receivers, but... It's been Amezi, Myers, and Harmon that have really done damage this year. Second catch for Amezi up to 35 grabs for the season. Ricky Person Jr. up the middle. That's five yards for Ricky Person, number 20 in white. Trying to pull the Cardinal de Cardinals defense wide with four receivers and try to make that box a six or seven man box and try to run against that. Only six men in the box right now. You see right here, that's what you like to try to run against. 35th career start for Ryan Finley. That pass near the 25-yard line. Thayer Thomas, and the sticks are rolling for the pack. Eight yards. Yeah, Thayer Thomas does a nice job. The redshirt freshman is, has been good at coming in and being a complimentary player. Does an excellent job on the slant there, making the contested catch. Finley approaching 3,000 yards, passing this season. Has the ball down to the 25. First and 10 for NC State. Finley to his right, has a step for his receiver to the end zone, and it's a touchdown to Kelvin Harmon. Well, Ryan Finley trying to find that one-on-one -on -one matchup, a little double move by Harmon, slant and go, and Harmon gets on top the ball, a little bit underthrown, but we show you saw in the opening package, Harmon will go get the football. Does an outstanding job on the 50-50 ball. He reels that one in for the first touchdown of the day. 25 yards on that play. There is a penalty marker thrown in the end zone. What an illegal substitution for Louisville, Tom. Illegal substitution, defense, 12 men in formation. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. We'll have some delivered to the broadcast position, Dave. 
Brian Finley went six of six through the air on that drive. That was Justin Marshall with the fair catch. Thomas, take a look at this play, and I talked about the double move. Here's Harmon right here at the bottom. He's going to come down, stutter, and go by. Corner going to bite on the ball, bite on the fake. It'll stop and take off. It'll slant and go. Anthony Johnson does a poor job of, of staying in his coverage, gets beat over the top. But ball was a little underthrown by Finley, but an excellent job by the 6'3 Harmon to go get it. Ryan Finley with that drive. He has now moved into second place in school history. Over 9,500 passing yards. But he's behind Phillip Rivers, Dave. Over 13,000 passing yards. What a career he had. That's Cunningham. As LaRisha told us at the top of the broadcast, Jawan Pass suspended for the first quarter of this game because of team obligations and a violation therein. So Malik Cunningham running the offense in this first quarter with 538 and counting to go for Louisville. Six yards on the previous play. Well, I think Alani Galloway, who's calling the plays today for Louisville, is going to want to get Malik Cunningham in an opportunity where it can be run pass options as much as he can. Dynamic runner with the football. Handoff. First down. Colin Wilson had cracking action for Wilson to get that first down. His teammates will help him up, and the chains are moving. Yeah, good hard running by the redshirt freshman here. It's a good block right there at the point of attack by Linwood Foy, but then it was the big power back at 225 pounds finding a way to get the first down. From Green Cove Springs, Florida, first and 10 Louisville. He ends. Bend a little bit around Cunningham, and his pass hits the turf incomplete, looking for Mickey Crum as tight end. Now, this is the part where Malik Cunningham's still trying to develop as a passer. He just, the comfort zone, the footwork, all the things that go into it. He's got a big arm. He can sling it all over the yard, but just a little bit uncontrolled. His talent obviously lies when he pulls it down and takes off. Cunningham, who this season averages over five yards per rush, decides to keep it as a blocker trips over the 40-yard line as he was taken down by the shoestrings. Six yards for Malik Cunningham. Well, that was a big tackle right there because Cunningham was just starting to get ahead of steam up, and there was some room to run. So a good open field tackle by NC State to force this to third down. Now is where you really got to, is a pass rush, Tom, if you're NC State. Is as much as you'd like to get after the pass, you've got to be disciplined to try to stay in your lanes to kind of him in cutting him because he'll take off here on third down. We're in Louisville today, Chapel Hill, the destination next week. Last game of the season here on Raycom Sports. It'll be this NC State program on the road against North Carolina. Play clock is down to three now for Louisville. And now whistle stops play and a timeout taken. Dollars with the addition, Dave, and it added 6,000 seats to Cardinal Stadium. Yeah, it's really cool. This is where the, right there in the middle is where the Cardinal come out, and they actually go through the suite area where you get that, that feel where you get to see the players up close and personal if you have those seats. So pretty cool what they've developed here in Louisville. This facility opening up in 1998. On third down, Cunningham flushed out of the pocket, makes a cut at the 40, but they double back on him and drop him at the 40, a loss of one. So it'll be fourth down for Louisville. Well, and McNeil 29 is going to make a key play here. They force him out of the pocket. Now, this is where I talked about your rush has to be contained. Excellent job by Jermaine Pratt, but number 29, McNeil, forces him back to the inside where the Wolfpack are able to get after him like a pack and put him on the ground. But good initial rush by Pratt, and then a nice job by McNeil to turn him back inside. So Elias also in on the play for NC State as Louisville has to punt it away. Sun tries to poke through those gray skies. The ball bounces inside the 10 and continues to roll to the six. 53 yards on that punt. Here's our first Citizens Bank forever first, Philip Rivers. NC State legend, first in the ACC in career passing, first in career yards of total offense, and first 
in NC State history in career TD passes with 95, Dave. Yeah, what a great player he was at NC State. has become a phenomenal player in the National Football League. You see, that's Rivers over four years, Finley on the right over three years. Obviously, Finley's career is going to end this season, not going to catch Rivers, but the numbers are very comparable. Look at that completion percentage. Finley just percentage points better than Phillip Rivers. 53 career TD passes for Ryan Finley after his recent 25-yard TD pass to Kelvin Harmon on the previous drive for NC State. Now this is a this is an, an offense that's trying to find a little bit of an identity running the football, averaging only 124 yards a game on the ground. But Ricky Person is a freshman that they're really trying to lean on a little bit. See the 4.4 yards a carry. Like to bring that up. The, certainly the yard scenario. But Person, when he's been able to be in the game has provided a little bit of punch, but right now Louisville limiting NC State on the ground. Yeah, the pack third in the conference, over 450 yards per game as a team. In the throw game and the run game, that's Ricky Person pinballing his way up close to the 14-yard line. He got seven yards. He's got a little bit of a knack, Tom, when he runs between the tackles. You see his ability, a little jump cut there. Spin off some of the tackles. He's got enough power at 210, 215 pounds that he has a nice interior run game. But uh, now third and in, in medium, deep in their own territory. Amarua, number 96 in red, making the play along the defensive line on that previous attempt. Finley rolls the pocket, dumps it off. It is complete. And that is first down yardage to Angeline, who makes the grab. Well, this is a cool wrinkle here. They show a quick roll to the right with the back and the flat, and Angeline checks out late. He's the check down, the secondary throw for Finley, and it ends up being Angeline that gets the first down. So nice job by Angeline, a little acting, blocking on the edge, and slipping out late on that little rollout. Just his seventh catch of the season for Angeline, who does have a TD grab this year. Our first and ten line brought to you by Dish. Switch to Dish to get every major Division I college football game. A lot of good ones on this Saturday afternoon, especially in the ACC. Ricky Person has nowhere to go. He is fenced in by the Louisville defense. Loses more. Emma Rua makes the play. Well, Cabin does a good job on the outside. Team set the edge, number 53. Amante Cabin does a great job of taking away that throw, that run to the outside and then a number of Cardinals get to the play and put him on the ground. But a nice job. This team, you can see the energy they're playing with. Talked about pride. It's certainly showing up for Louisville so far today. Final 40 seconds of the first quarter with NC State ahead 7-3. Ryan Finley with impatience. The pass is caught, but it's not a big game. Just past the 15-yard line, Dylan Ottenreef. Anthony Johnson, the freshman corner, who got beat for the touchdown, does an outstanding job of coming up and making the tackle in the left flat, or the right left flat for defense. And now you got third and long. And now Brian Van Gorder, who's one of those guys, defensive coordinator-wise, that can dial up some, some strange looks, will get a chance here in the second quarter to maybe put some pressure on Finley. Final seconds will run off the clock for the first quarter. Third down defense. But when you get it third and 13, this plays into your hands. Let's see if Louisville plays this deep coverage, dropping eight into coverage. Two for three on third down in the game for NC State as we start the second quarter. Just a three-man pass rush look. Looks like they're going to drop eight into coverage. Five receivers set for Finley on third down. Stable pocket, incomplete at the 40. Looking for Harmon, but deflected away. Louisville had the play from Anthony Johnson, and it's fourth down for NC State. Well, John, see, there's safety help back here, so as he goes back, he doesn't have to continue to backpedal. See, here's a safety help, so he can squat on the route. He just sits down on the route, looking at the quarterback all the way, and has a chance to intercept the pass. He knows he's got a safety behind him that's going to help him anything behind him. So, nice job by the freshman to sit down and Probably the first guy to tell you should have picked it off. A.J. Cole with the punt. Burns ranging back into his left near the 30. Sidesteps one man. Burns, 35-yard line. Rajay Burns, 45. Flag is out as Burns 
turns the corner and goes into NC State territory, but two penalty markers are on the field, and actually now there's a third as well. Boy, I love the energy that Louisville's playing with, and really a block that didn't need to be thrown. Is going to end up coming back. There's the penalty in behind. Really, after the play had gone by, Evan o just a, a poor decision to make a block there on the behind the play. So this is going to come back, but great energy. Well, there are two fouls during the return, during the kick, by both by the receiving team. Block in the back, number 36, receiving team, that foul will be declined. During the kick, holding number 20 receiving team. That foul will be accepted. It'll be penalized 10 yards from the end of the kick. Receiving team will keep the ball. First down. Well, know your score is brought to you by Lending Tree, Dave. So let's go around the ACC. Big day. At and taking the snap is Atwell. Atwell looking to throw, but then he gets dropped just beyond the 15-yard line. Andreas Bryant and a loss of five on the play. And Atwell, the, the youngster, the wide receiver, dynamic athlete, little wildcat scenario. Two-two Atwell, the freshman from Miami, Florida, took that snap. A dual threat quarterback in high school. Northwestern High School in Miami. Getting an opportunity here to play for today. 5'9 and 156 pounds. He'll hand it off. Up near the 18, the ball came flying out at the end of the play. That was Wilson on the carry. And the flag is out as well. That well guided Northwestern High School to a 6A championship. He was rated one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the country. 4,000 yards passing, 1,500 yards rushing. This is a dynamic athlete that's been playing wide receiver. After the play, that was first right conduct, number 85 on the offense. That penalty will be, after this is to the goal, down count, that is number 85, first on sportsman like conduct. Let's check in with LaRisha on the sidelines. So when we spoke to interim head coach Lorenzo Ward, he told us that he's trying to re-engage the players, you know, after this season so far. Be creative and generate excitement, and he's doing that by simplifying the game. That was the plan heading into this matchup, to make things simpler. Simpler. He wanted to do that so that his quarterbacks, you know, Jerron and the league, and now Atwell can have easier decisions to make. Yeah, just give them an opportunity to be the players that they are. I think that, and the biggest thing is he wanted them to compete in practice, have fun in practice. He would blow a whistle, and all of a sudden they'd have a sudden change scenario where it might be a one-on-one -on -one matchup between a lineman and a D lineman, uh, DB and a wide receiver. Just to let have some have have some fun in practice, and I think that it really translated. I think the kids did a good job of responding to what they were trying to do, and. Uh, there was uh, a lot of camaraderie, and, and you really you got to rally the troops. If you're Lorenzo Ward, there's not, not any magic buttons to push. You just got to want these guys to compete and play with the pride we've talked about. And I think that Louisville's come out and really shown themselves uh, really well against a good NC State team so far today. Forced to punt in this situation, Mason King, who had a 53-yard punt at the end of the first quarter, punting from his three-yard line. This up near midfield, and that's a fair catch made. And Thayer Thomas makes it successful. With NC State, 7-3. Wolfpack with a little razzle gadget. They come to the near side and take it down to about the 42. This is their best starting field position of the game as Trowell made the play. Well, we talked about Finley and his accuracy, getting the ball out on time, distributing the ball to a number of receivers. Looks with the ball placement. Now, this was a pretty good play by Harmon to come back and catch it. But 10 of 12 already in the game for 74 yards in the touchdown. Does an excellent job of getting the ball to the guy that's open. There's something we said for that as a quarterback. Gillespie stopped at the line. He lost yardage, lost one. Now, once again, Louisville has done a nice job against this NC State run, NC State run attack. 
fighting off blocks, getting off blocks, and finding a way. Etheridge makes, ultimately makes the tackle, but a host of Cardinals are there to force third and short. Two of four on third down in the ball game for NC State. A combination of Harmon and Myers, the top receiving tandem in all of the football bowl subdivision. Will he use one of them here? Louisville up tight, trying to take away that quick, easy throw. Inside the 40, that's first down yardage. It is Kelvin Harmon, and they convert on third down. And with that grab, Harmon going off over a thousand yards. Well, Tom, here's the one guy that's off. See, everybody else is up press, and that's what Finley does. He does a great job of finding that matchup. Corner off. I've got a quick slant to the inside. Let me get the ball outside, and Harmon goes up and makes the catch. But it wasn't just because it was Harmon; it was because it was the best matchup. And for with for the route, that's what Finley does is he sorts out the defense. Well, I'm in over a thousand yards receiving for the season. Couple of catches today it includes a TD grab of 25 yards in the first quarter from Ryan Finley. They're going to get six on that play. And give the uh, offensive coordinator Eli Drinkwitz a lot of credit. He's continuing to stay with the run game, so Louisville can't just rush the passer. They're having to defend the run. They give it back to Finley. Open man at the 10, a twisting attempt and catch. Auten Reith made the grab, going to the turf. And Tommy gets caught by the turf monster, gets him. He's wide open, it's a walk-in touchdown. How about Gillespie? Does he get the ball out of his hands before his knee touched the ground? But Auten Reith stumbles and makes a circus catch as he stumbled on the turf. But Gillespie, was he off the ground? when he shoveled the ball out. Come out. Louisville. Correction. There will be no charge. Timeout. The previous play is under review. Watch the right knee of Gillespie, and is the ball out of his hands before? Yeah, the ball's gone before the knee comes down. And, boy, it was close. Let's take a look at right there. You see the ball out of his hands, knee still off the ground. So nice job by the officials to get that right. Um, what'd you what'd you what'd you call it, Tom? What'd you call it? A flea flicker? Some gadget tri gadget <laughs> trickery, Dave, is what we like to call well, it. Ottenreath almost was the the butt of the joke there because he stumbled on the turf. The turf monster grabbed him. He made a circus catch. There's Finley. Play fake. Throws it incomplete near the pylon. Looking for Ottenreath again. The sophomore from Dallas, Georgia. Amarua had the pressure on Finley. Here's our red zone brought to you by CPI Security, the official security partner of the ACC. And North Carolina State has struggled down here. Now you see the 73%, but the touchdown rate is what they're looking for. Only 54% is NC State down here offensively. 12 of 15 through the air for Finley. 107 yards. Handoff. Gillespie was stopped. Reversing field and down near the five-yard line. Group tackled by the cards after just a yard. Now, C.J. Avery, I believe, stepped up on the play. Going to be involved in turning this play back to the other way. Number nine, Avery, turns the ball back the other way, and then Glasby tries to make something out of nothing. They give Louisville a ton of credit. They rally and force third down here. Third and goal, three of five on third down of the game for NC State. Harmon one-on-one -on -one right here with an inside corner. That's the big-timer looking for one-on-one -on -one matchups. Myers in the slot up here looking for a flat route potentially. Finley who threw for 374 yards against Wake last week. Has the dance out of the pocket on the run into the end zone. Incomplete and nearly intercepted looking for Thayer Thomas in the end zone but it falls incomplete from Finley. Looked like Doran Etheridge number 17 is the guy that's going to get his hands on the ball and I thought that Finley had an opportunity to Jacoby Myers the ball. Watch Jacoby Myers come open right there in the middle. Right in there to his right, but he tried to shove the ball to there. He sticks his hand in the air. I thought Myers was open in the flat to the right. They tried to shove it into the back of the end zone. And afterwards, does a great job of mirroring Thayer Thomas and knocking the ball away. This will be a 23-yard attempt from Christopher Dunn. And the field goal is good for Dunn to take a departure. Larisha Harris and our outstanding Ray Comsports ACC football production crew with you here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Wolfpack just got a field goal to take the lead. Coming out of the end zone is Yeast. 
Has a lane, trips near the 20 and falls at the 24. And we are going back to our Charlotte studios, Tommy and Katie, for an update. Well, let's head over to Winston-Salem. The Pitt Panthers are now taking on Wake Forest. Uh, Kenny Darren Hall with a two-yard touchdown run, but Pitt struggling early in the rushing game, only running for 43 yards. Kenny Pickett, 12 for 15, 138 yards. The point after is blocked. So right now, 6-3 to three Pitt, guys. We're awake coming off a big win at NC State in Raleigh. Beat this North Carolina State team and now giving Pitt some problems with that dynamic do it running back at Quadre Olison and Darren Hall both closing that thousand yard day. Olison only over thousand. Cunningham's pass is caught up to the 35 goes Mickey Crum for a first down. As a senior from Columbus, Ohio has 12 yards on the play from Cunningham. Uh, Crum came in with 19 receptions on the year. Nice job, nice easy throw and a good accurate throw by Malik Cunningham and then Cunningham is lost in coverage with a bootleg and a little chippy. The cloud comes up and lets him know that, hey, I'm, I'm going to track you all day, big fella. Hall. Three yards for Hassan Hall, the freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, Maynard Jackson High School, an outstanding high school career, and now trying to carve out a career here with the Cardinal. We've got a little bit of sunshine all of a sudden. You see some shadows on the field. Here at Cardinal Stadium, the Cards 2-8 and eight on the season. 0-7 in conference play and 2-3 and three here at Cardinal Stadium. Cunningham hits the eject button up past midfield. NC State side of the 50, down to the 45. Moore made the tackle, but not before a 17-yard gain for Malik Cunningham. Number 41, Isaiah Moore is the player down for NC State. An outstanding freshman linebacker for NC State. Got a little twisted up. Let's do, this is what Malik Cunningham brings to the table, and it's something these Louisville fans have seen over the years with Lamar Jackson. He looks a little bit like Lamar Jackson's ability to make people miss. Gets it up the field for a first down. He is extremely elusive. Lamar Jackson, the 2016 Heisman Trophy winner and a finalist in 2017, two-time ACC Player of the Year, Lamar Jackson, as they attend the number 41, Isaiah Moore. He's a redshirt freshman from Chester, Virginia. Uh, he's coming off a, a, a pretty good game. They lost the football game against Wake Forest uh, a week ago Thursday night, but he had six tackles and two sacks in that game. And Talking to Dave Huxtable, he really likes the way the, the redshirt freshman has been coming on at linebacker. And had two of the four sacks in the game against Wake Forest last Thursday in the loss, 27 to 23 for Moore. The college football playoff rankings brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Three from the ACC as the Tigers lead the way at number two. Well, we know Syracuse has taken on Notre Dame. Big game in Yankee Stadium and big game for Dino Babers' team to climb into that elite echelon. Boston College travels to Tallahassee to take on Willie Taggart Seminoles. This is the Cardinals running up the middle. It's Hall. Hall. They drag him down inside the 15. Hassan Hall, the freshman. He runs it for 33 yards for the Louisville Cardinals. Well, talked about the excitement of Hall and his ability to step up, step on the accelerator, found the crease. And boy, get him down any way you can. Jersey, uh, hand warmer, whatever you got to do. If you're NC State, excellent run by Hassan Hall. Just his second carry of the ball game. He's got 33 yards. And you're looking at one of the best defensive teams against the run in NC State. Although, before this play develops, we've got at least three flags Offense on the field. Offense number 73. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well, Tom, this is team that was penalized 17 times a week against Syracuse 125 yards and penalty yards there it is five penalties today for 30 yards for Lorenzo Ward of the cards as the interim head coach dismissal of Bobby Petrino earlier this week a shuffling of the staff and here they are today playing with some pride against NC State and moving the football Cunningham looking left all the way, and that one was deflected and ruled incomplete. James Smith Williams, number 39 on the edge for NC State, making the play and deflecting that football. Uh, we talked about uh, to Dave Huxtable. They had to replace nine starters on this defense. Uh, we know about Chubb going third overall in the draft, and 
some of the great players on this team. In fact, that entire front four from a year ago went in the first four rounds of the NFL draft. They had to replace all those guys. And good job by James Smith Williams to step up and be one of those guys. Flags are out again. Ball start. Offense number 83. Five yard penalty. Second down. Sixth penalty against the Cards as we check in with Larisha. Well, when we spoke to the defensive coordinator, Dave Huxtable, he told us about James Smith-Williams, who came in at 190 pounds. Now he's up to about 270. Huxtable described him as the most consistent and effective guy up front, and we know that he puts in that hard work by getting from 190 all the way up to 270. That's a pretty big jump, you guys. Yeah, first-year starter. He, he's already, from what I understand, he's already got a job at IBM. He's interning at IBM, done some stuff in the offseason. Smart guy. Second and 20. Hassan Hall on the delay gets two yards. So the penalty pushing the ball out of the red zone for Louisville, which is one for one in the red zone today with a field goal. Well, Tom, this is where, I mean, obviously you want to force a team into third and long, and this makes it tough to call plays if you're Lonnie Galloway for Louisville. But again, the danger of the quarterback run is always in the mix here. 0 for 3 on third down of the game for the Cardinals. They're 11th in the conference, just 38% entering the day today against NC State. From the 22 of the pack, Cunningham, eyes downfield. Flag comes out, cuts at the 10. He goes to the end zone, but there are two penalty markers behind the play at about the 25-yard line. So 22 yards on the run by Cunningham, but we need to sort out a couple of penalty flags. Holding with a 79 offense, 10-yard penalty, third down. Uh, Kenny Thomas gets flagged for the hold, and boy, you see how elusive Malik Cunningham is if he gets out in space. And NC State decided to come with pressure there, and Cunningham's going to get outside. Let's take a look over here. Right here is the hold. Right there, just grabbed hold. See, as soon as Malik Cunningham broke contain, you got to let him go. Now, there's holding on every play, but Kenny Thomas has got to know once his quarterback gets to the edge, I got to let go of the defender because he's got to be able to disengage or they're going to see that hold right away. Now, you look for if you're if you're Louisville, you have to secure three here, so you've got to get something to get you down to a decent field goal opportunity. Third and 29. Don't say that very often. Screen. Safety valve screen pass. They've got some room for Hall. They got a big chunk, Dave. Not enough for the first down, but they did get inside the 20. 14 yards on the play. I love the call, though. Good job of making it look like sprint to the right, threw it back to the left side by Lonnie Galloway and Mike Summers, who are handling their, their offensive play calling today. And they got it back to a manageable field goal. But prior to that play, it was going to be a 50-plus yard attempt. So nice job of getting back in position where you can stick one through the uprights. So Blanton Creaky, who is one for one, connected from 32 yards away in the first quarter and is now 9 of 10 on the season. In fact, had one blocked against Syracuse, his only miss. This from 36 yards away, and it is no good. Oh, that's deflating, Tom. With part of what was lost in the conversation of Pitt trying to secure the Coastal Division and go to the ACC title game is the fact that Wake playing to put themselves in a bowl game coming off a big win against NC State a week ago. They'd be bowl eligible for the third straight year for the Demon Deeks and Dave Clawson as we check in with Marisha. Well, when we spoke to Ryan Finley, he told us there were a few guys in the NFL that he actually admires and watches. He told us that he tries to mimic a little bit of what Aaron Rodgers does. A, a few other guys that he watches is Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. He studies what they do, you know, try to take what they've done and how they've played and incorporate into his incorporate that into his stuff. He's going to be in low on the tackle. So D. Smith comes in over the top and just kind of folded up that leg is. Folded up on the Harmon tackle there. Second and one for the Wolfpack, leading 10-3. A 25-yard TD pass for Ryan Finley and a 23-yard field goal from Christopher Dunn here in the second quarter. TD pass from Finley came in the first to Kelvin Harmon. This is Ricky Person, first down yardage. Six yards for Person, first down NC State. A good solid first down play allows Eli Rickwitz to get back to his run game a little bit, pound out a first down. NC State would like to 
They wouldn't, wouldn't mind eating some clock here and put some points on the board. Obviously, it has to end in points, but the job is staying with that run game. Keep that part of the mix. Slows down Louisville's pass rush. Ryan Finley, who threw for 367 yards in this game last year at home against Louisville in a victory for the Wolfpack. Through the right side. Trucking his way to the 40-yard line is Ricky Person. Another six yards for Person. Once again, we will wrap up the regular season here on Raycom Sports next week. Chapel Hill, North Carolina, NC State. This program we're watching today on the road to take on the Tar Heels. It's a great rivalry. I've had a chance to do that game a number of times, and it'll be a lot of fun. You check all the records and everything at the door when those two tie it on. We have had some fantastic finishes between those two programs. Taking care of business today between NC State and Louisville, and next week, we're off to Chapel Hill to finish the 35th season of Raycom Sports broadcasting ACC football. It is third down, three of six on third down for NC State. Well, an opportunity now because they've run the ball well on first and second down to run again here on third down. And Louisville has tried to counter with a bigger group in the interior to try to take away the run game. I would expect NC State to come at them with the run game. Third and two for the pack, and Ryan Finley going to try to get it on the ground. Ricky Person up close to the 48-yard line. That is a first down for NC State with just over three minutes to go in the quarter. Uh, good patience by Person, too. This was a stretch play to the outside. See how patient he stays. Got in behind the block of Otten Reith right there and stepped through for the first down. So nice job by the freshman. I think he's got a nice feel, Tom, for that tackle to tackle or tight end to tight end running. With a really good job staying patient and finding that crease late. Finley on first down. Play fake and throw. Near the 45 yard line. It's incomplete. Looking for Thayer Thomas, the redshirt freshman. Chandler Jones had to play defensively for Louisville. Clock stops with 2.37 to go. Second and 10 from their own 47 for NC State. Trying to evaluate what he's seeing up front. This is where Finley is so valuable trying to find that easy throw. He's got soft corners both at the top and the bottom. He takes advantage of it. Looking left all the way inside the 45 and more. Down to the 40. Emeka Imezi. 14 yards as Kane pass at the tackle. Yeah, Finley does a good job of finding. And when I say soft corner, that means a guy playing off that's going to backpedal out. He's not uptight, playing bump and run, or has safety help behind. He does a good job of finding those matchups. Quick snap and play for NC State. Ricky Person, five yards. Nine carries and 34 yards now for Person. And then the tempo NC State wants to play with is only facilitated by getting first downs. They're doing a good job of stringing first downs together, which puts Louisville in a bind to be able to substitute. Finley sets and throws, floats it inside the 10, but too far for Kelvin Harmon. Rajay Burns was trying to recover defensively for the Cardinals. Well, it looks like Burns gets just a little piece of him right up here. Yeah, he just got just enough of Harmon where he couldn't, couldn't come out of the break. Remember, that ball's coming out of Finley's hands before Harmon ever comes out of his break, trying to set it up for him to go get it. But a nice job of getting just enough out of the receiver by Jones to, 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 to keep Harmon from getting up the field. Harmon, who tied a school record in their most recent game last Thursday against Wake Forest with 15 catches. Four of seven on third down for the pack in the game. Soft corner at the bottom, soft corner down at the bottom. Finley's pass. Near the 22-yard line, it is caught for a first down. Thayer Thomas, they'll mark him at the 23. They convert on third down, 146 to go. They're running the out route in the slot. Finley has got one-on-one -on -one matchup, and Thayer Thomas does a good job of going up and getting the football. That ball would have liked to have been thrown a little bit further to the outside. A good job by Thomas to go up and secure the first down. With that pass, Ryan Finley goes over 3,000 yards passing for the season. That's the third time he's done that in his NC State career. This pass complete at the 10. 
Move made inside the five of Mecca Imezi. First and goal, NC State, 21 yards. Well, Russ Yeast playing off. It's a good throw by Finley to the outside on the out route. Now removing, see, they're going to count this box. How many are in the box to run the football? This is Finley diving for the goal line. And he came up just short near the one for Finley after Mezzi made his fifth catch of the game to get it to first and goal for the Wolfpack. Well, it's been a nice job. NC State eating. And Pounder does an excellent job on the 50-50 ball. But this has got to be about the run game here, Tom. Come off the ball, give Reggie, Reggie Gillespie a chance to push his 10th touchdown of the year in the end zone. Second and goal for the pack. Finley hands it off into the end zone, and Gillespie gets the work done from a yard away. Touchdown, NC State. Yeah, there's a, at some point as an offensive lineman, you look at the play call and you say, you know what, we need to be able to come off the ball, push us in the end zone. Excellent job, Gillespie finding the crease in there. Good job of coming off the ball and reestablishing the line of scrimmage in the end zone. Got a good push on that side. Gillespie found it and shoved it in. That's a big body running back. It's not, you're not going to get down with an arm tackle. 235-pound Reggie Gillespie has his 10th of the year. An extra point. Dunn sails it through. And the Wolfpack go 13 plays, four and a half minutes for the score as we go back to Charlotte. And point from a yard away for, as they've mentioned, his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. River's been pretty good at the next level, too, Tom. Eighth all-time <laughs> in yards, fifth, almost 53,000 yards. He's sixth all-time in touchdown passes with 363. So the, the former Wolfpack quarterback is getting it done in a big way in the NFL. After that TD from Gillespie, Louisville now being outscored in the first half by 164 points this season. All right, time for the Ram Power Play. It's brought to you by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500. And we go back to last Saturday. Pitt running back Quadri Olison bursting through the hole en route to this monstrous stiff arm. Dave, get off me for 97 yards and a score. Yes, sir. Nice little stiff arm right there. And get off me. That against Virginia Tech, 235 yards for Olison. Three touchdowns, the run, the second longest play from scrimmage in pit history. All right, our first and ten line brought to you by Dish. Switch to Dish, get every major Division I college football game. Malik Cunningham on the rush. Well, there's to hear what uh, Coach has to say about that pit game and coming up at halftime. And Kenny Pickett going to have to make some plays, looks like, in, that, in the passing game for Pitt to free up that rushing attack. Once again, the Clemson Tigers have already secured their fourth straight trip to the ACC Championship game in Charlotte December 1st. If the Panthers win today, they will join the Tigers in the Queen City and Bank of America Stadium in that title game. First down for the Cardinals, 11 yards on the previous play, Jalen Smith. Good job of getting out of bounds to save what time is left on the clock with 27 seconds. Jalen Smith playing his 49th career game in a Louisville uniform. First team all ACC a season ago, making his first catch of the ball game. Cunningham, nowhere to go. Freelancing, faking the pass, and up the sideline. He made a lot out of nothing on that play, Dave. Four stopped by Tanner Ingle and three yards, but hard fought by well, this Cunningham. Is, this is where Malik Cunningham has got to maybe check the run game at the door a little bit. He needs to get the ball out of his hands. He's got soft corners to throw the ball outside the outside the numbers to receivers, but uh, he has a tendency to pull it down a little bit too quickly. You're looking for matchups where you got one-on-one -on -one matchups like down here and get the ball out. Nine rushes for 53 yards for Cunningham. Looking to throw in this instance. Sends it out on the edge. This is Hall. Cut at the 50. Down close to the 40-yard line. Officially marked at the 42 for Hassan Hall. Jermaine Pratt made the tackle. 14 yards on the collaboration. A timeout call by Louisville there. Just 10 seconds to go in our second quarter. And well, we have a moment. Let's revisit our Aflac game trivia. But Harmon, who has a touchdown catch today at 25 yards. For Harmon, his fifth, or sixth rather, TD grab of the season. With just 10 seconds to go, 
with the Cardinals trailing 17-3 to NC State. On first down for the 42. Cunningham buying some time. Runs out of time and runs out of the pocket. Down to the 32-yard line, but See, not enough time on the clock. NC State's willing to let him do that. He's got to get the ball out of his hands to give them an opportunity to get a field goal. He needed about 10 more yards for a legitimate field goal opportunity. Just didn't understand the situation. Didn't take care of the situation very well. So Malik Cunningham ends up playing the lead. The Cardinals got a field goal on their opening possession, but 20 straight points by NC State. 17 straight points by the Wolfpack. As we start the second half, this is Yeast racing up past ball the 20. Out. The ball comes out at the 21. Fumble by Yeast on the return at the 21-yard line. Yeah, good hit. Trying to get the number of the NC State player. It looks like Louisville got back on the ball. Let's take a look at this now. Yeast coming up the field. Big hit right there. Tanner Ingle made the hit. And let's check in with Larisha Harris. All for four on third downs. What do you need to do to correct that? Well, again, we're killing ourselves with penalties. We're putting ourselves in bad situations. And that's, you know, I think the difference in the ball game right now. We got seven penalties here, they got one. And your guys came out playing pride, playing with lots of pride, a lot of energy. Well, how do you keep that same energy in the second half? Well, we explained before the game started. It was a four-quarter game. We've got to play all four quarters. NC State is a great football team. If we're going to have a chance, we've got to be playing without emotion. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I think their ability to run the ball that they've shown in the first half, you saw that stat, 123 yards rushing in the first half. This is a defense that only gives up 96 yards a game, so certainly NC State's adjustments will be to try to take away the run, which is going to provide some opportunities throwing the ball. There is a throw from Cunningham broken up near midfield. Looking for Seth Dawkins, number five. Chris Ingram is back defensively for NC State. Here's our principal financial second half game plan with Dave Archer. Well, you want to Louisville. Disrupt Louisville's running. He just talked about 123 yards in the first half. That's NC State's number one goal, and I would imagine that's what Coach Huxtable's talked about. Hey, we got to limit the run game, which again is going to give an opportunity on the outside for to make some throws one on one. 0 for 4 on third down of the game for the Cardinals. Cunningham decides to take off and can't get out of the pocket, and did he oh. lose the football? NC State says it has it, and they do. The officials concur, and the ball to the Wolfpack. Well, it looked like Cunningham ran into the back of one of his own players. But it looked like a a Isaiah Moore comes out of there, number 41, with the recovery. Let's take a look at what happens to Cunningham. He he's quick to pull it down. This is a designed run, evidently. It just certainly looked like it. But good pressure by James Smith-Williams, and the ball pops out. What a big turnover early in the game. Certainly, Louisville trying to recover some of that energy they had to start the game. And boy, they, nothing takes that away from like a turnover. 24 now turnovers on the year for this Louisville offense. NC State and Finley to the 20 yard line and another completion for Ryan Finley, who has gone over 3,000 yards passing for the season. Complete to Mizzy. And a smart play by Amezzi to hold up on the sideline. You look at the, the guys in the first half that were the big-time achievers. Armin now over 1,000 yards received. We talked about what a big-time player he is. Top of the screen right there, Kelvin Harmon. Harmon has a touchdown catch in the game from Ryan Finley. That in the first quarter. Six-man box looking to probably run the football here. We will run it with Gillespie. Gillespie breaking through the line and into the end zone for NC State. Reggie Gillespie, second TD run of the game. Once again, nice recognition by Ryan Finley and by Eli Drinkwitz. They count the box. There's six in the box. They've got enough people to get a hat on a hat. And Gillespie, the 235-pounder coming downhill, runs right through the Louisville defense for a touchdown. 18 yards, Dave, on the run by Gillespie as Dunn is in for the extra point. Gillespie now with his second rushing touchdown of the game. That's 11 for the season. And they convert off the turnover. The fumble by Cunningham, and then Gillespie 
finishes it off 18 yards away. Five yards deep in the end zone, and Hassan Hall is not coming out. And we're trying to see if this might be an opportunity if Jawan Puma pass is going to come in. Nope, they're going to stay with Malik Cunningham. Thought maybe pass might get an opportunity. He was loosening up on the sidelines, but Malik Cunningham, pass was loosening up. There were a couple of guys that had come over talking to him. We thought might, he might get an opportunity, but as Larissa told you, he missed the first quarter because of a violation of team obligations. And has been standing watching Malik Cunningham. 11 rushes for 64 yards for Cunningham. He hands off for a modest gain, if any, from Colin Wilson. Well, what's going to happen now for Louisville is NC State's adjustment was to take away the run game. So now Louisville's going to have to make some plays in the passing game. It's going to be up to Malik Cunningham, who's got to make some plays on the perimeter. See their first half possessions or the possessions so far. And got the opening field goal in that opening drive, but since then it's been pretty lean. 32-yard field goal in the first quarter for Blanton Creaky on that opening drive. Second and nine for Cunningham and the Cardinals. Directs his receiver towards midfield. One-handed grab attempt. And off of the fingertips of Dez Fitzpatrick. Incomplete. Moorhead defending for NC State. All right, you're looking for some matchup. And right here is the matchup you're looking for is right there. The slot receivers are running off. That's the throw he has to make right away. But again, Cunningham has not played a ton of quarterback yet. Throwing the football. He's more of a runner. And he's not seeing coverage. That was just a man under setup. And you're looking for that out route in the slot. This guy right here. Des Fitzpatrick is getting one-on-one -on -one matchups. And Cunningham just 6 of 11 for 60 yards, and they have not converted a third down of the game. 0 for 5. Sheds one tackler. Throws a short hop pass near the 30 to Des Fitzpatrick incomplete. And it's going to be fourth down for the Cardinals and Malik Cunningham. Good, good quick pressure by Dave Dorn's defense. Going to flush cutting him out of the pocket. So he immediately gets flushed out of the pocket. Now he's got one place to throw the ball. And that was to try to get it to Des Fitzpatrick in the right flat. So just a, a short circuited offensive drive there. But it's going to come down to where Louisville's going to have to make some plays on first and second down in the passing game to free up their run game. This is King to punt. Bayard Thomas from the 37. Spins away from the first Cardinal tackler and then ridden up past the 45. There is a flag on the play. 38 yards on the punt. The return from Thomas is nine. Flag on the play as Berkeley made the tackle on special teams. So Jeff Flanagan has to consult with his Dear fellow return. officials. Holding number 13 receiving team. 10 yard penalty. First down. And it's a quick consultation in the holding against Dave Doran's Wolfpack. ACC standings, Dave, are brought to you by PNC. Make today the day. Number two, Tigers going to defend their home field against Duke this evening. Syracuse, we talked about their big game uh, coming up against uh, Notre Dame and certainly Boston College on the road against Florida State. And Pitt is in a battle for their lives right now against Wake Forest. Virginia and Georgia Tech playing each other. We talked about talked about Duke going on, going down and taking on the Tigers. But Pitt's found a way to get themselves back in front, Tom. Up 13-10 for the Panthers and Pat Narduzzi trying to represent the Coastal Division in that ACC Championship game December 1st. Toss it back to Finley. He lets it go over the middle. Midfield and caught. 45-yard line and more. Jacoby Myers running down to the 40-yard line. 28 yards on the pass from Ryan Finley as Etheridge had to make the stop. Uh, they call it throwback special, meaning you hand off. Now throw it back to the quarterback and let him throw. But a good, quick decision because Avery is right in his face. How about this throw by Finley to get Jacoby Myers the ball over the middle? They're doing the razzle gadget again, Dave, and this one is much less successful near midfield. Well, they brought the safety. D. Smith, the free safety, comes on the blitz, and he's the guy in the backfield that makes the hit, and that's Doran Etheridge. He's the player. He's going to hit his head on the hip of Patterson, the defensive end, and so... Whenever you get that situation, a headshot and then the neck part of it, they're going to be very careful with Thorne Etheridge, and it looks like they're going to take him directly in to the locker room for further evaluation. But it's great to see, great to see him up and walking off the field. 
This is what NC State was trying to do was another gadget type play handoff reverse and here's where Finley wanted to throw the ball Kelvin Harmon is wide open but because of the pressure by Etheridge and Patterson and D Smith he just couldn't get the ball off so give the the pressure that they dialed up some some credit well we have a moment let's check in with Charlotte and Katie and Tommy. Well, let's head over to Wake Forest where the Pitt Panthers once again doing it through the air. Kenny Pickett finds Tazier Mack for a 63-yarder. Uh, Kenny Pickett on the day, 21 of 27, 284 yards. Pitt has not thrown for over 200 yards once this year. Pitt up on top of Wake Forest, 20 to 10. This is a update is brought to you by Hardy's Try an All-Star Meal. Tom, back to you. First ever meeting Pittsburgh and Wake Forest and if the Panthers win they are in as the Coastal Division champs in the ACC title game. Finley's pass slightly behind his receiver at the 35 yard line and incomplete to Jacoby Myers. Yeah, given the pressure again from Louisville this is a quarterback that's we saw the sack of a little bit ago that he, on that last play is just the sixth sack of the year from the best in the country protecting the quarterback but again Louisville with some pressure on that last play forced an inaccurate throw from Finley on first down or on those, second down. Those six sacks that you mentioned Dave fewest in all of the conference next week the NC State program is off to Chapel Hill to take on North Carolina our last game of the year on Raycom Sports five of eight on third down in the game for NC State from the 48 of Louisville Finley moving left and throwing Finley's pass Near the 29 yard line. It looked like the receiver went out of bounds and then came back in to make the catch. There's a flag on the play, and that's Myers who hold it in. Well, Finley took a tough shot at the end of this throw, too, Tom. Just now getting up off the ground. Armani Caban coming in and putting the hit on Finley, trying to shake that one off. Yeah, I think Jacoby Myers went out of bounds, as you said, Tom. That's the flag. The receiver went out of bounds, did not reestablish himself back in bounds, and was the first to touch the ball. That's a little touching. The penalty is a loss of down at the previous spot. It's fourth down. Uh, give Louisville a ton of credit here, Tom. After giving up the initial kind of gadget play, a little throwback, they do a good job of, of taking care of the business. And there's Jacoby Myers out of bounds and then comes back in and catches the football. But he does a nice job, a little toe tap along the sideline. Unfortunately, he was out of bounds prior to if you're an NC State fan. But I credit Louisville for finding a way to get off the field after NC State crossed the midfield strike. This is Burns wants that fair catch and that gets away from it. Big high bounce at the six. And a couple more bounces before NC State downs it inside the one yard line. 47 yard punt from AJ Cole. How about CJ Riley? the play he makes right there looked like he was gonna let it bounce in the end zone but the big wide receiver did a perfect job as the gunner to down that inside the one yard line certainly want to keep it out of the hands of Burns who does have a 55 yard punt return touchdown against Indiana State this season for Louisville here comes Juwan pass first action of the game yeah, and you wondered when it would take, when, how long it would take, and here is pass, and what a tough situation to come in off the bench, the ball inside your own one-yard line. They're going to try to pound it out of here. A lot of guys like to throw it. A lot of offensive quarters like to throw it from here, but they're tightening down to run the ball. Yep, from the files of the obvious, this is their worst starting field position of the entire ball game. Inside the one-yard line, they'll give it to Jeremy Smith. Well, it passes in the game to give him a spark. Completing under 55% of his passes. You see the touchdown to interception ratio not near what you would like as a quarterback. But he is in the game. Make no mistake to make some of the throws that are available because NC State is trying to take away the run game now and pass is going to have some opportunities on the outside. Got a soft corner right up here to potentially throw to. Pass through for 196 yards in the losing effort last Friday at Syracuse, 54-23. And penalty flags. Ball start. Offense, number 83. Half a distance to the goal. Second down. And Mickey Crum, the tight end, gets called for illegal motion. So the work you just did on the run game, and that's their eighth penalty after 17 penalties a week ago. But you just did a nice job of getting it out to a second and six situation, and you get it taken away because of a penalty. So 
Louisville their own worst enemy right now. Just can't get out of their own way on first and second down. Second and nine for the Cardinals. Ten minutes to go in the quarter. Pass. Hanging in there. That's incomplete. Now the corner was tight enough on the throw to where he, if the, the route converted to a fade route. So that's a really low percentage throw. Pass tries to get out of the pocket. Got to give him some quick, easy throws with a slant routes. Something coming to the inside. Run, uh, receivers running away from defenders because NC State understands that if we're going to crowd the run game, we've got to be up tight to take away the quick, easy throws. Cardinals still looking for their first conversion on third down in the football game. From his own end zone, Juwan passed the sophomore from Columbus, Georgia. In traffic, ball deflected and incomplete. There was a lot of activity around that pocket in front of Juwan Pass. Smith Williams, Shug Frazier, both in on the play as it developed in their own end zone yeah. for Louisville. Dave Dorn's team will get the football back. A lot of pressure coming, and the tight end is wide open. Look at Crum in the middle of the field. He's wide open, but Pass just can't get the ball off. The tight end wide open over the middle. Ball gets batted down. If he gets that back out to Crum, there's nobody there. So Mason King with his heels right up against the back line of the end zone. At the 40, it's Thayer Thomas. That punt was 38 yards and the return from Thomas just two, but either way, excellent field position for NC State. And it's quarterback Ryan Finley as Berkeley has another special teams tackle for Louisville, but they give the ball back to NC State. 24 to 3. 24 straight points for the Wolfpack after Louisville got a field goal on its opening possession of the football game. All right, here's our first and 10 line brought to you by Lending Tree, official loan shopping partner of the ACC. So glad that you're with us. The college football in the Atlanta Coast Conference. Tom Wormy, Dave Archer, Lucia Harris on the sidelines. Led by executive producer Rob Reichley. Director Roy Alpers and our talented production crew here in Louisville, Kentucky. One week to go in our regular season. Racing through the line and inside the 20 to the 15 is Reggie Gillespie. Well, Dave Dorn said to Larissa Harris going off the field at halftime, we need to get our run game going. And they have certainly done that. Excellent job of creasing that interior defensive front. And Gillespie, and, and part of that is getting up to the second level and getting the linebackers blocked. This pass down to the five after a 26-yard run by Gillespie to the end zone and running in. He mezzi as he broke a couple of tackles. Got away from Rajay Burns and a mezzi rolls into the house for NC State. Well, Trayson Smith is the guy that's going to miss the initial tackle. He's one-on-one -on -one to, to the outside. And Amezi is just going to step out of number four's tackle, or number 10, I'm sorry, number 10 tackle. Burns, and then Smith comes in and misses the tackle as well. So two missed tackles, a great opportunity to get Amezi on the ground and just didn't do it. 12-yard TD pass. Finley to Amezi. High-powered offense for North Carolina. 31-3, the NC State advantage. 14 points for NC State in the last four minutes and 21 seconds. That most recent drive was two plays and 29 seconds. It covered 39 yards and a Mecca Imezi. The touchdown catch from Ryan Finley. His fifth TD catch of the season for Imezi. Hall at the 20. And the return up to about the 22 or 23. 21 yards on the return. Let's head down to Larisha for Gatorade. Heard around the cooler. Well, guys, we know that two players on NC State squad wear the number three. Jermaine Pratt, the linebacker, and also Kelvin Harmon, the receiver. Both of those guys were number three, but who's the better player? That's the question that was asked to the team. Well, when, at, when I asked that question to Pratt, he said, I don't know. We both get our job done. But when I asked Harmon, he said, of course, me. I'm the one who gets it done. <laughs> but in a junky manner, he said that, of course. He said both of those guys do their job. Um, and when asked to other teammates, such as Jacoby Myers, he said, hey, that's one those guys like to fight about and that's for them to determine. Well, two players that you could 
that you have to have on your team. Uh, there's no question. Dave Dorn would not be able to answer that question either. Kelvin Harmon has been a big time player over a thousand yards receiving now and obviously he'll have a decision to make coming up this year as to whether he's going to go to the league or stay at, at NC State for another year and Jermaine Pratt there is no doubt that he's going to be playing linebacker for somebody in the National Football League next year. Eight and a half minutes to go in our third quarter. Louisville with the football. Pass at the 30. It was caught up to the 31 goes Mickey Crum and Jermaine Pratt. One of the guys who wears number three made the tackle. And I think Pratt's shown his ability to do all the things. We saw him early in the game fill the hole against the run. Then you saw him knock a ball down in pass coverage. He also rushed the passer. We saw him push Malik, uh, cutting him out of the pocket to create a sack. He's shown his versatility. Former safety, six foot three, 240 now, playing linebacker, big time player. What a difference a year makes. When the teams met last year, they were both ranked. Louisville was 17th, NC State 24th, and a win by the Pack 39 25. That at home for NC State. This is pass, trying to run it up to the 32 yard line. Isaiah Moore, number 41, has the tackle. Well, and interestingly enough, Drain Pratt called this play out. He said, Beware of the perimeter. Excellent job by Isaiah Moore, the linebacker, the freshman, shot through, but Pratt moved him over prior to the snap. And he shoots through and makes the play on the zone replay on pass. And you'd like to think that at some point they're going to let pass sling the rock a little bit. Throw the ball to the perimeter. Talked about at halftime, the number one adjustment for NC State's got to be to take away the run. And they've done that in the second half. Thayer Thomas wants the fair catch. Backs up to the 30 and makes it successfully. That punt was 38 yards, 4.7 seconds on the hang time from Mason King. All right, time for our Yellowwood brand five-star recruit. And this time around, it's going to be Ricky Person, the NC State running back. Right? Heritage High School, Wake Forest, North Carolina, third-rated running back in the North Carolina senior season, 2,200 yards, and he mixed in 38 rushing touchdowns as a senior at Heritage High School. Big-time player, and he really is holds the future of what they might be running the ball. Golaski's carried the load today, but that guy right there, a big part of NC State moving forward. Well, nine carries for 32 yards for Person. Finley, a confident throw up past the 45, and the catch made by Jacoby Myers. Big time yards. throw by Finley here. Watch the defensive back try to undercut the throw, but Finley puts the ball out in front where he can't get it. What a big time throw. Good job by Jacoby Myers to reel it in, but an excellent throw by Ryan Finley. Third catch from Jacoby Myers today as Finley's pass was right on target. This is Gillespie down to about the 41 yard line on the rush for NC State at a first down as we check in with Larisha. Well, I spoke to Jacoby Myers this week, and you know, he is a wide receiver who transitioned from quarterback, and I asked him about that connection between him and Ryan Finley, and he says, hey, I understand how it is to be behind that line how to have a D lineman coming at you, the timing and everything. So he says he tries to be what he needs to be fast when it comes down to his connection between him and my uh, Ryan Finley. And there goes Myers again down to the six yard line on the catch from Ryan Finley. How about this duo, Dave? Well, we talked about uh, Kelvin Harmon over a thousand yards. Finley now up over 700 yards receiving himself. And again, the deep crossing route. Finley, uh, Myers has got that speed, that ability to create. And I talked about I said, what, what describes this guy? And he just says, the guy's reliable. Finley's pass caught to the end zone touchdown. Gillespie adjusting to the football just a little bit low, makes the catch. And Gillespie has his third touchdown of the game. Two rushing, and now this one receiving from Finley. Well, Louisville could not afford to give NC State more snaps. And because their, deep, their offense has been ineffective, here in the second half, it's allowed NC State to get on the field a lot more offensively. And now you're seeing the ability to, to diversify the attack. The last he's rushed for a couple touchdowns. Now he puts one across, pass receiving. We see, we've seen this NC State offense at its highest volume. Second TD pass of the quarter, third of the game for Ryan Finley. And now Gillespie has the receiving touchdown to go along with two rushing from a yard and 18 yards, 38 straight points. And they take a 35-point lead into the fourth quarter, and they are driving the football. 
This is Ryan Finley around the corner and out of bounds inside the 30 for Ryan Finley down to the 27 yard line eight yards on the run Dave before we had those technical issues Louisville was driving the football but threw an interception down at the one yard yeah line. Puma pass made a couple of really nice throws to Jalen Smith that got uh, Louisville in position to potentially strike but uh, misfired on a long throw Moorhead the safety came across and made the play down in the reds and down deep in in uh, NC State territory and since then NC State's had the football and they pounded it out to here and now are threatening again for another score five receivers set 11th play of the drive Finley back gets away from the pressure directs some traffic throws it on the run and it's too high for Kelvin Harmon Here's our stats through three quarters brought to you by the North Carolina Education Lottery celebrating 12 years over five point eight billion dollars raised for education to learn more visit nclottery.com probably don't have to go any further than the third down conversion between the two teams Louisville's not been able to stay on the field 0 for 8 on third down where North Carolina State has continued to operate but that high level is with, with which they've done all year long the best team in the ACC in third down offense. What a day for Reggie Gillespie had been shut out the last two games. He's got three TDs in this one and two rushing. This is Harmon creating space inside the five. Kelvin Harmon beating the defender. First and goal, NC State. The ambassador of the corner. Excellent throw right over the top. So we talked about Harmon's ability to go get the football when it's in his area. Outstanding catch with tight coverage. Kelvin Harmon has been as advertised big time play six catches on the game for Harmon got 23 yards on that previous play first and goal over the middle and the catch made for a touchdown Jacoby Myers on the quick hit and the Wolfpack living in the end zone in the second half three yards on the connection well Finley puts this ball the only place Myers can make the catch low into the inside and how about the hands of Jacoby Myers to squeeze that with tight coverage these receivers Amizi Amezi Myers Harmon Thomas they just go get the football for Finley six for six in the red zone five TDs and a field goal and that last one from Jacoby Myers Stadium Cardinal Stadium it has been all NC State outside of that first drive by the Cardinals where they got a field goal Ryan Finley's now thrown four TD passes a career high this is Hall out near the 25 yard line and let's go back to Charlotte check in with Katie and Tommy big one later today Notre Dame and Syracuse this update is brought to you by Hardy's try an all-star meal the orange and the Irish on the board uh, Notre Dame quarterback Ian book finds Dexter Williams nine yard touchdown pass a little under route in the red zone Notre Dame with the first score of the game nine minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first quarter guys back to you Wow, quick score for the Irish in a heck of a battle with number 12 and number three in the country. By the way, the Orange have played at Yankee Stadium seven times and won six of those, including a couple of pinstripe bowls, although they trail the Irish early in that Shamrock Series game. Atwell on the catch. A little closer look, Dave, at the big game today. Well, you look at Syracuse, they've been able to get after the passer with Robinson and Coleman coming off the edge. Two big time pass rushers and Notre Dame has done a pretty good job of taking care of Ian Book and look at the completion percentage for Book at quarterback taking care of the ball throwing the ball in the end zone but also completion percentage off the charts at almost 75 percent. Syracuse went undefeated at home this year for only the fourth time in school history. This pass near the 50 is caught. Seth Dawkins. Tayshawn Smith is the young corner, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, that just doesn't get to the ball. And Dawkins is able to reel it in. Pretty good throw. Best throw of the game for Malik Cunningham. 26 yards officially for Malik Cunningham on the pass to Seth Dawkins, the junior from Columbus, Ohio. First and 10 for the 45. Cunningham kept it. He's got room to run inside the 30. 
Makes his way inside the 25 yard line, marked out at the 24 and forced out by Tayshawn Smith. He got 21. Came with a slot blitz at Cunningham and Cunningham limping a little bit out of, the, out of the back end of this. But Zone Reed reads it, pulls it down. It's man coverage in the secondary. So once he breaks contain, there's nobody for him. Excellent run. That's his strength. Malik Cunningham out of the pocket. Run with the ball. Dave, these young men from Louisville have faced a lot of adversity this season and especially this week. Trying to finish strong, although NC State appears to be just too much today as they come up with a big defensive play at the 25. A loss of two on a run by Smith. Ibrahim Kohante makes the play. Good job coming off the edge. Another one of those young guys for Dave Dornstein, the freshman. They're 45 pounds. Conte gained 45 pounds in the offseason to make the transition to defensive end. Second and 12. Jeremy Smith near the 20-yard line on the rush. He got six. Well, you talk about what Louisville's been through, Tom, and, and obviously the, the change it, it, it with the coach, but you can't emphasize how hard these coaching these coaches have worked to try to get these kids ready to play. They, they, they talked to, to a man about how important it was just to make sure that this season tried to end on an up note for them. They got 11 seniors that are moving on, and, and I think that uh, Renzo Ward and, and the staff that's here is trying to make that happen. Third down, running to the end zone, and Cunningham takes it in for a touchdown. Cardinals in the end zone for the first time today. Just going to run the option from the shotgun, a little fake to the outside, and then Cunningham with a great speed. Once he gets coming downhill, really going to be tough to handle, and he's had a couple of nice runs today. There's no doubting. His ability to run it. He just have not been able to enough, make enough plays in the passing. And ironically enough, it's a big pass play by Cunningham in that drive that really kind of set the table for them to get their first touchdown of the day. Yeah, hit Seth Dawkins on that play and then took it in from 20 yards away. Malik Cunningham with the fourth rushing touchdown of the season for him. 13 carries, 102 yards for Cunningham. Yeah, for the quarterbacks, but they had to divide and, and try to get guys ready to play. And they really took... Uh, the emphasis on you know, making sure the kids uh, had a good experience, if it were, you know, as it were, to try to, to have, make them have some fun. He had some different drills he had, but he did a nice job of, of creating an atmosphere where they could get together and play and compete. And Dave, Coach Petrino certainly experienced some success here in his two stints as the head coach, but again dismissed on Sunday leading to the changes in the coaching staff 77 wins second most in school history there is a review going on on the field but again the change is made and now uh, Louisville trying to move forward although 0 and 7 in conference play this year yeah, and I I feel for the coaches as we check let's see if we can figure out how many players are on the field for Louisville let's see one two three four on this side and you've got Six on the other side, so it looks like 11 based on what we've got on the screen. So I don't see more than Louisville's supposed to have on the field. That looks like 11. I After guess review, play with 11. both teams had 11 men yep. on each team. First down. We had already figured that out, had we? We're already taken care of that. And there's a word with a little shake of the head going, come on. Coach Ward, very candid in our conversations yesterday, and we certainly appreciate the time of the Louisville coaching staff that first and ten line brought to you by Lending Tree, the official loan partner of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Bodine on the carry. Matthew McKay has come in as the quarterback. Ryan Finley, what a day. Four touchdown passes for Ryan Finley. And so 21 on the season now for Finley and McKay is into the game. And we're going to Chapel Hill next week, Dave, for NC State in North Carolina. Okay, the freshman on a rally. Just one pass attempt on the year, but uh, yeah, looking forward to that, that matchup next week. Certainly a rivalry matchup between North Carolina State. North Carolina always has some, some fun stuff. We've seen some great memories down through the years in that game. Looking forward to that. 
you know, finishing up on, on talking about the staff at, at Louisville, have a tremendous amount of admiration for what these what these coaches are trying to do to help their players get ready to go. And don't want to beat dead horse here, but just it really, when you think about what happened, it really puts a lot of flux, a lot of families in flux, a lot of things are going on with these coaches. Obviously, they, they're doing this for a profession, so they sign on for this some, but still, they, their families are affected just like uh, just like the kids are getting ready to play the game. So, um, we just hope the best for all the people that are attached to Louisville and certainly the coaching staff, which there's a good chance that a lot of them won't be here next year. Just hope they get those opportunities. These guys are the guys that are pouring themselves into this week and the next couple weeks to try to help their kids finish the season off the right way. Brian Van Gorder in the red jersey, defensive coordinator. Next week, they're going to take on their rival, Kentucky, right here at Cardinal Stadium. This is first and ten for the pack. Up near the 45 and complete. Imezi made the catch for eight yards. And for more, let's go down to LaRisha on the sidelines. Well, we know that when we were speaking with interim head coach Lorenzo Wade, he told us that this is the fourth time that he's actually been in this situation, but this time it is a little different. You know, he was a part of that um, transition when Steve Spurrier retired, but again, this situation is very different. The kids were looking for a change. They wanted it, and it was time for a change, and it actually happened. Bodine on the run for NC State. 14 yards on the rush. And there is a player shaken up behind the plate at the 45-yard line. Calm and take advantage of our limited-time holiday offers. 45 to 10 back on Ray. Evaluation tent. We'll check on his status in just a moment. First and 10 for NC State in command. 45-10 as we play in the fourth. McKay puts some air under this one. The receiver just can't get there inside the five-yard line. It was Myers trying to chase down that football. Here's a look at our Toyota game summary for summaries of other ACC games. Go to the Toyota Game Center on the ACC. Dot com. Dave Ryan Finley over 300 yard passing again. Yeah, he's been brilliant. We talked about Jacoby Myers and, and Kelvin Harmon. Amezi doing a great job catching the ball. Gillespie running the football. You see the 10 penalties that really created a problem for, for Louisville. One for nine on third down. That was a result of some of those penalties. Just could never get any rhythm offensively. Seventh time this season that Finley has thrown for 300 or more yards. His backup McKay on the run to the 25. And the catch made Kelvin Harmon. Uh, Car Armin does a great job of getting the left foot down here to stay in bounds. McKay has to throw the ball over a Louisville defender here. Harmon going to stay alive with his quarterback. He's going to get that left foot down just in bounds. Excellent job by the big timer. Five catches now for Harmon. McKay on the rush, and there's some good news for Pittsburgh fans. Here's Katie and Tommy. This update is brought to you by Hardy's Try an All-Star Meal. It is a final at Wake Forest, Coach. Uh, Pitt quarterback Kenny Pickett finds receiver Maurice French, 23-yard touchdown piss, pass. Pitt, who has not thrown for over 200 yards in a game, threw for 316. Pickett, 22 for 30 for three touchdowns. And you can see the Pitt Panthers excited. They clinched their first ever Coastal Division title. Back to you guys. Yeah, congratulations to Pat Narduzzi. An excellent job by Sean Watson to change up that running game and throw the football with Pickett. It's Myers on the catch, Dave. And because Pittsburgh has clinched, Dave, six different champs out of the Coastal in the last six years, thanks to the Panthers today with their win against Wake. Well, how would you like to be the team that's sitting in Chapel Hill? The only team that was able to knock off the Pitt Panthers. We did that game. In fact, North Carolina's had their way to Pitt over the years, have they not? They have won every meeting with North Carolina. Uh, I'm excited for Pat Narduzzi's team. We, like we said, we did a pivotal game for them when they beat Syracuse at Pitt in a high-scoring overtime affair. 
McKay getting away. He's got room. McKay scampering inside the five and slides down near the three. Matthew McKay on the run. A little bit more elusive than Ryan Finley. They love his arm. Just obviously Green has not played very much and really had Thayer Thomas open for a touchdown. And he might rethink running with the ball after that shot he took at the end. But, uh, but a heck of a job of scrambling by the young quarterback. Just to put a button on that point you made about North Carolina and Pittsburgh, Dave, North Carolina has won six in a row against the Panthers in all those meetings as ACC opponents. So 6-0 and against the Coastal Division champs for the Tar Heels, their lone conference win this season earlier this year against the Panthers at home. And that's where we're going next week for NC State and North Carolina. It's a great way to finish the season here on Smith comes in and drops the hammer. We talked, he was one of our food line impact players, big time safety. Saw him go down. You never see that, you know, like that collision with the head down. But D. Smith did get up and walk away, as did character of the corner. So it was good to see both Louisville Cardinal players get up and walk off the field. Flags are out before this third and goal play for NC State. Illegal substitution, defense, 12 men in formation, half a distance to the goal, third down. And some of that might be trying to get the right people on the field because of two players coming off because of injury. You can understand maybe there from a depth standpoint who should bring on the field and who shouldn't be for Brian Van Golder's defense. Matthew McKay has come in for Ryan Finley here in the fourth quarter. Finley is 26 of 36 and 316 yards passing and a career high four TD passes for Finley. McKay with the pitch. They're going wide. They're going in the end zone. Brady Bodine touchdown NC State. Well, checked off. This came in from the sideline. McKay looked at the sideline. They realized that Louisville was out man to the right, to the offensive right, went to the option play. And that boy died in the football and he got in the end zone. Third rushing TD of the season for number 33 for the pack. And the pitch from McKay to Bodine, who did the rest. Bodine, I said his name incorrectly. I want to apologize to his family and all those that are watching. <laughs> Extra point is good from Dunn. David, 52 10. Another TD for NC State. We're going back to Charlotte. Well, this update is presented by Hardee's as we take you to Yankee Stadium. And on this play, Syracuse fans getting a little worried because Eric Dungy out hurt now. Yeah, no word on the actual injury, but Tommy DeVito into the game under center. Yeah, they'll really miss his running ability. He's rushed for 690 yards. Now, Tommy DeVito might be a better passer, so they'll probably feature that in the rest, for the rest of the game if DeVito comes in. Notre Dame on top, 13 to nothing, still in the first quarter, guys. Well, that's a tough loss. You lose Dungy. Dungy. He really affects the game down in the red zone when you get a quarterback that can run with the football. So now Moniel. And obviously, Strickland will have to pick up the slack in the run game. And, but DeVito can sling it all over the yard. You know, one of the key victories, Dave, for Pittsburgh this season was that win against Syracuse at home for the Panthers in overtime, where they fell behind early 14 0. Quinton Werginis made a big play on a strip and a scoop and score for Pittsburgh. And, you know, you look back at that game, that might have changed the trajectory for the Panthers. They were only 2 and 3 at the time. And one and one in conference play when they took on the orange. Huge moment. The strip and the scoop and score by Dane Jackson certainly changed the fortunes for him in that game. All the way to the Coastal Division title with their win against Wake Forest today. We're two weeks away from the 2018 Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship game. Get your tickets now. Purchase a four pack and receive four $5 Bojangles gift cards and four ACC hats. Reserve your four pack today. Dave Archer, the matchup is set. It's the Clemson Tigers against the Coastal Division champs, the Pittsburgh Panthers. Yeah, the Pitt Panthers, and congratulations to Pat Narduzzi's team. Now they got a little bit more work to do next week. But they're going to take on one of the best in the country, the Clemson Tigers. Clemson takes on Duke later on this evening, but Clemson poised to try to get into that playoff, but they're going to have to get through the Pitt Panthers first. Pitt, the sixth different team out of the Coastal in six years to represent the division. The Clemson Tigers are in the game for the fourth straight year. Timeout. Louisville. 
and Clemson has won three in a row in that ACC championship game. They have gotten to hoist that trophy with Commissioner John Swafford in Charlotte, North Carolina. December 1st will be that title game. Next Saturday, on the last weekend of the regular season, the Raycon Sports Game of the Week heads to Chapel Hill as the Wolfpack take on North Carolina. Coverage begins at noon Eastern with the ACC Blitz, powered by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500 with Katie and Tommy. Some great matchups over the last 35 years includes Jacoby Brissett, the big day for the pack four years ago, and Giovanni Bernard, the punt return six years ago for the Tar Heels. Dave, we can't wait to get to Chapel <laughs> Hill. Yeah, that's one of those matchups that, again, you throw the records out. It hadn't been a very good year for the Heels, but you can bet they'll be ready to roll. And that crowd will be jacked up for the Wolfpack coming in. Dave Dorn's Wolfpack coming in, trying to establish themselves as one of the best in the ACC in a, in a really top-flight bowl game for the Wolfpack on the line, potentially in that game. Yeah, they're going to improve to 7-3 and three with a victory and 4-3 and three in conference play. Get their first road win in conference today against the Cardinals and Ryan Finley over 300 yards passing for the seventh time this season. That leads the conference. The ball was fumbled initially. They're going to say he came out to the two-yard line. They're going to mark it at the two for Cunningham. Cunningham's not getting up, so he took a shot on the end of this. Oh, favoring the right hand. Dropped the, dropped the ball, had the ball out, and he was did a good job of getting back on it. Got it out to the two, and it was pushed back to the end zone. But fell on his hand. Let's take a look at it here. The ball out. Does a good job of getting back on it. Certainly does. So the forward progress up near the two. Oh, right hand got pinned underneath him as he went to the ground. So pass loosening for the Cardinals. Cunningham has the only TD of the game for Louisville, a 20-yard TD run in this quarter. And Cunningham being helped to his feet, checking out the right hand. So he's going to come to the sideline for Louisville. Our coverage of ACC football being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome the men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the world. So proud to have you with us, and we hope you're enjoying the broadcast. A lot of military tributes in the stadium gonna, today, Dave. I was just going to say they, exactly. they did a they did a halftime, did a military appreciation. Been a number of military personnel in the building. Larissa, you got more on the military appreciation? Yeah, I do. We know that they are wearing special uniforms to pay homage to those who have served. They have special hard knock uniforms on, inspired by the Knox Army base. And those uniforms, again, are paying homage to the precious mineral reserve with the flakes of gold throughout the design, which is one of the world's largest precious mineral reserves. Again, those flakes of gold that you'll see on the L that's on their pants, that is in honor of, again, the precious mineral reserves. And the whole entire theme is inspired by Knox Army Base. And, uh, Fort Knox, my dad was stationed at Fort Knox when he was in the, was in the service. Approaching the four-minute threshold. Been a struggle today for the Cardinals. Pass complete up to the 15. It's only three yards, though. Wakefield on the catch. Yeah, but all this, all this is about getting ready for next week and, and try to get some kind of rhythm offensively. Getting this, Lonnie Galloway calling the plays. Mike Summers, the offensive line coach. Those two teaming up, trying to make next week an opportunity. This would be a. They'll have a Kentucky team coming in here. That's a. That's a solid, good Kentucky team under Mark Stoops. So, find a way to win that in-state battle would would go a long way to putting some salve on the wounds of the Louisville Cardinal. Playing for the Governor's Cup next week, and that pass incomplete near the 20-yard line. Looking for Jeremy Smith. The 31st meeting between Louisville and Kentucky. Our Dickies' hardest working player, Reggie Gillespie. Three TDs total in the game. Yeah, had uh, two rushing, was outstanding, getting the run game going, certainly in the second half. Got this pass in the flat and shoved that in the end zone, too. Three touchdowns. On the day for Gillespie, 12 touchdowns on the year for Reggie Gillespie. Been tough sledding for the run game for North Carolina State during the year, but uh, had a nice, did a nice job in the second half of getting that going. It's a big run for Louisville. Smith 
Second level past the 30 yard line. Gillespie, who had been shut out the last couple of games, now has a rushing TD in eight games this season. And Jeremy Smith was just one game a year ago, was banged up. So in 2016, Smith had six rushing touchdowns. Get a chance to play here in senior year. Pass with all day. Had an open man there midfield in Seth Dawkins, but it was inaccurate and behind the receiver. So next week, we'll have that game. It'll be our last broadcast of the season against the Tar Heels for Dave Dor Doran and the NC State Wolfpack. They have added that game December 1st against East Carolina. And you'll recall for NC State on September 15th, their game against West Virginia was canceled. Boy, that's a game that you'd love to see, wouldn't you, right now? Be able to see them play West Virginia. Jeremy Smith, another big run for Smith. And that is inside the 40 of NC State. As Engel forced him out, he got 29 yards on the run. Good running by the senior running back. Talked about how good he was in 16 with eight rushing touchdowns. But, yeah, going back to that, when I mean, you go back to that early season matchup, it, what might have been, obviously West Virginia in position, They've got a tough game coming up this evening. They play Oklahoma State in Stillwater. If they're able to win that game, that sets the matchup up with Oklahoma next weekend in Morgantown for a chance to represent in one side of the Big 12 championship game. But NC State and West Virginia would have been a heck of a matchup. Here's our performance of the game, Dave. It's brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. Kelvin Harmon, number three for the pack. Seven grabs for 100 yards for Kelvin Harmon. Guy just catches the football no matter where you put it. That's his eighth career 100-yard game, his third this year for Kelvin Harmon, but he is a definite go-to guy, and not far behind him is certainly Jacoby Myers. But Kelvin Harmon, we talked about him off the top, how good he is, and he's got a nice matchup with his quarterback. They've got a nice rhythm between one another. Harmon had 15 catches last Thursday in the loss to Wake Forest to tie a school record at 134 yards. And how about... Harmon's game at Syracuse this year. It wasn't a losing effort, but 11 catches for 247 yards, receiving a career high and second most in school history, only behind Torrey Holt. Well, Kelvin Harmon, probably the only thing when you start talking about him at the next level, and it's certainly he's something he's going to have to look at as a redshirt junior, is he going to come out? Uh, and that'll be something that he'll have to discuss with Coach Dorn and whatever grade he's given for the National Football League. They do a good job of giving these guys a lot of good information prior to declaring whether they're coming out or not. But the only question will be is what is his top end speed? Louisville continues to rush the ball effectively, and that's Wilson. And all of a sudden, the cards come alive on this drive, Dave. Yeah, no, a, number, a number of younger players in for NC State defensively. And, but give credit to Louisville. They're blocking them, and good job of running the football. Wilson does a good job of getting up the field. Another one of those young guys that you look to if you're a Louisville fan. Wilson is just a redshirt freshman. First and goal for the Cardinals. It'll be Smith, the senior. And we're inside of a minute to play as the clock continues to roll. And, you know, NC State told us they, they were not exactly sure what they were going to get from this Louisville program with all the turmoil, but NC State got the job done. Yeah, they came in and they worried about themselves. Dave Dorn said yesterday, he says, you know what, Louisville, we, we, we've got respect for them. We've prepared for them in the right way, but it's really about us. If we operate defensively and offensively, we feel like we're the better team and we'll get the job done. And certainly they've leaned on their quarterback and those big-time receivers to get it done and the defense really did a nice job of adjusting to the run game of gave up 123 yards on the ground in the first half and really shut the door until this final drive on the run game trying to get one more playoff Puma pass trying to shove one more in the end zone here for Louisville you see three seconds two seconds they do get the snap away trying to go to the end zone and they come up just short kind of the way the day went for the Louisville Cardinals Dave Doran and the Wolfpack get the victory, their seventh of the 